having people around, you do feel a degree of embarrassment sometimes for the duration of the visit. It'll just be upstairs gaming all the time and he'll be shouting and cursing. Stephen and Louise are describing life with their 16-year-old son who suffers from gaming disorder. Those aren't their real names. We're protecting their identities. It's a controversial condition defined by the World Health Organization by three characteristics. Impaired control when gaming, prioritizing gaming over other interests, and escalation of gaming despite negative consequences. The games industry and some psychologists question the evidence used to define the disorder. Until quite recently in the UK, help for problems like this could only be sought via private health care. The NHS has created a specialist clinic for treatment of the condition via therapy. Hello, Sofacorn National Centre for Gaming Disorder. Based in West London, it's part of the National Centre for Behavioural Addictions. This is the first time cameras have been allowed to film inside the gaming clinic. We know that um, gaming disorder is quite um, a rare condition. So the symptoms of gaming disorder can be really quite severe, which has surprised us. So they can struggle with anger, anxiety and low mood. Um, often they also experience physical symptoms in terms of loss of sleep. Um, and that's often because people will be gaming at night to connect with gamers abroad. Yeah, so we need to think about the groups that we're going to start in the new year. This is the only NHS clinic in the UK treating gaming disorder. Its patients are spread out across England and Wales and are often treated via video chat. A recent study amongst gamers concluded that, broadly speaking, playing video games is good for well-being and that playing games has helped lots of people get through the pandemic. So we're not saying that gaming is bad at all. Uh, we completely accept that for a lot of people it's a really positive thing in their life. We are really talking about that small percentage of people who are having a massive problem with it and, it, and it's genuinely affecting their quality of life and their ability to interact and their ability to function. We opened our doors at the end of 2019 um, we've had well over 300 referrals since then, 200 just in uh, 2021. It's very strongly weighted in favour of male, so we've seen 89% of people have been male. Stephen and Louise's 16-year-old son has recently been diagnosed with autism. They referred him to the Gaming Disorder Clinic themselves, but he hasn't engaged with the treatment. What was most helpful for us is talking to other parents. They made a special support group for parents who have the same gaming needs or addiction, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we meet once a fortnight on Zoom to discuss how we're doing. And more than anything else, I think the greatest thing about that in terms of benefit is to realise that you're not alone. There's loads of other people up and down the country and all across the world that are going through the exact same situation. What do you think the future looks like for your son and what do you think the future looks like for you as a family? I feel optimistic because on Facebook I follow a lot of people who are very like our son but they're adults now. And I follow them because they're hugely insightful, but also it really helps me feel he will find his way. Mark Chislak, BBC News.